Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be taking a look at corn, or depending on where you are in the world, maize. Now corn can be used in multiple ways in Farm Sim 25. We can harvest it as a grain, and we can therefore use it to just sell. We can put it in the cereal factory for processing of cereal, or we can feed our animals, for example, Pigs are going to be accepting corn as an input to their food source. Now something else that we can do with corn, and you can see the forage harvester just behind the main harvester, is that we can chop corn and produce chaff, at which we can then put into a silage bunker and make silage for our cows, and ultimately to go into our total mixed rations. Now I do have a complete video on silage, that is going to go into a lot more detail specific to using a forage harvester with corn, putting in a silage bunker, compacting it, and all that. I also have a dedicated video on making total mixed rations where we're also going to be able to make use of our silage. This video is primarily going to focus on using a traditional harvester to harvest your corn and what you can do with it after you do that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Farm Sim Academy infographic related to corn. We're going to expect an average yield of 9,200 liters per hectare. We're going to also expect an average selling price of $1,140 on easy economy. It says we're going to use 400 liters of seed per hectare. Now we'll have to see how much that really holds up. The trend has shown that these academy infographics show a higher seed rate than what we're actually seeing in FS25. We have a six month growing duration for our corn to go from a planted state to a fully ready to harvest state for a traditional grain harvester. Now we could chop our corn ahead of that six months and we'll talk about that when we get to the appropriate stages later on in the video. We're going to be planting our corn in the April and May time frame and we can expect to harvest our corn in October or November. Now let's take a look at some of the machinery that we're going to be needing to use with respect to our corn planting and harvesting. If we come here to our vehicle shop, well let's go up here to seeding and planters. We're going to be making use of the Optima RS planter in today's video. As you can see it is going to be able to plant corn. It also has the ability to fertilize your soil. So if you do need to go ahead and fertilize your field, you can get one level of fertilization at the same time that you are seeding your crop. Now, any of these planters will be able to put corn in the ground. I like to use the Optima RS because I feel that it is rather optimal with respect to its cost and its working width at nine meters. Something else we're gonna need is we're gonna need seed. And we're gonna be able to get seed here in either big bag pallet format, big bag format, or a pallet of seed bags. Now, what is kind of distinct between these two is that these two are going to hold 1,000 liters apiece, and this one's going to hold 1,050 liters. So you do get a little bit more product with the pallet of bags, and it is the same cost. You're going to find that here under seeding and then category seeds, or if we scroll down to the bottom of this list, we're going to find the objects section. And from here, we have big bags. There we have our seed. We have big bag pallets. We have our seed right there and we have pallets and we have our seed right there. Now, once we have our seed in the ground, well, there's a couple different ways to harvest it. As I've alluded, we can use a forage harvester and there before we can go here to our forage harvester category. We have this one here. This will attach to a three point of a tractor and basically then make use of the various harvester headers, which we're gonna talk about here in a little bit. Or you could go with a dedicated self-propelled forage harvester like one of these listed here. For this video, we're going to make use of the Jaguar 990 Terra Track. You're going to have to accompany the forage harvester with a harvester header. And for our corn specifically, we're going to start down here at this Kemper 345 Plus. And then the rest of these headers are going to be able to work specifically with corn. For our video, we're using the Orbis 900 simply because it is matching the Kloss brand. But in reality, you can pretty much use any of these headers, again, from the 345 Plus, all the way down here to the Crone X Collect on any forage harvester. 
with respect to traditional grain harvesting, we have the harvester category here. Any of these harvesters will be able to harvest your corn. For this video, we're using Lexion 6900. Why? Because I like it. And then as far as our header, we're gonna use a corn header. We gotta go to a corn header category. And for this particular video, we're using the North Star 1230 FD. Why? Because, well, it's not a Case or New Holland or John Deere header. And I feel the North Star 1830 is a bit too wide for this harvester given its particular pipe length. So we're back here to the North Star 1230FB at nine meters. This one folds up for easier road transport. Meanwhile, some of these do not fold and therefore you're gonna to want to use a header trailer for that. And we come here to our header trailers and we can find one of these header trailers and we're just gonna to have to pick the header trailer that's gonna best work for our header. How do we know? Well, let's come back here to our corn headers and let's just pick the North Star 1830. Then go to combinations. Here we can see the harvesters that it suggests for that particular header and the header trailer that is suggested for that particular header. And as you can see, we do not have the 6900 here. So I was making a pretty good choice. That's gonna be pretty much it as far as your machinery that you're gonna need specifically for your corn harvesting and planting. Now we talked about production and the only production that will accept corn sadly is our cereal factory and the cereal factory is going to require other products in order to do anything with the corn that we drop off. We're going to be able to make chocolate cereal, count chocula, ah, 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 all right, 10 units of honey, 10 units of chocolate, 36 units of oat, and 36 units of corn. It's going to make 20 units of cereal. We could also make raisin cereal. 20 units, sorry, 10 units of honey, 10 units of raisins, 40 units of oats, 40 units of corn to 20 units of cereal. That is basically the cereal production in a nutshell with respect to corn. If you do make cereal, well, you're gonna be able to sell it here at the small farmer's kiosk, the large farmer's kiosk or the farmer's market amongst a couple other sell points. If you do use a forage harvester to chop your corn into chaff well here we have a silage bunker this is going where you bring your chaff and unload it in order for the act of compacting and then ultimately converting it into silage as i mentioned i have a dedicated video on silage that will show this process off we could also store it and wait for the best time to sell and or use our grain in a production or use it as animal feed by putting it in one of our various silos. We have the Meridian bin. I'm gonna have a dedicated video on that here in a little bit on the channel. We also have the Una silo with our dump and fill pipe right there. We have a concrete version of the silo. And then we have this kind of European brick and concrete version. Kind of nice, interesting look there. And we're gonna find those in build mode. We have shift P on PC. For our silage bunker, we're gonna find it under silos. Then we'll scroll down here to the bottom. There are three different sizes. We have a small, medium, and large pull-through bunker. And then we have a large three-sided bunker. And these typically rotate on 90 degree angles because they do involve a heap. And that is, they involve dumping something to the ground. And then as a result, then you're gonna be restricted to 90 degree angle rotations. As far as the other silos go, we have our silos listed here at the top. We have the brick silo. We have the concrete silo. The Una silo I mentioned, we've got a couple of different sizes for those. Then we have a couple of different single bins. And then we've got some much larger silo complexes that are gonna have very, very large storage capacities. As far as our productions go, we're gonna find our cereal factory right here, $240,000 under the factories section. And then if you didn't know, your cell points you're going to find here under cell points we have our small kiosk we have our big kiosk and then we have the farmers market just listed right there so let's go ahead and load our planter up with seed and we'll get to putting our seed in the ground and we'll keep track of how much seed we did put in the ground and i'll report back and we'll see how accurate that infographic truly is 
Now, this particular planter only holds 660 liters of seed. Not the biggest capacity, so that's kind of a trade-off for its price and its horsepower requirement. But it does have the ability to fertilize, as I've mentioned, and we are not going to make use of that feature in this video because of the fact that, well, we've already fertilized this field and it's ready to go. So as far as field prep, if you need to plow the field, go ahead and plow the field before you put your crop in the ground. Also, if it needs lime, put lime in the field. Mulch the field before you plow it if you want to get that bonus. And then lastly, go ahead and cultivate the field and get it ready for planting. Now this particular planter has two modes. We have a transport mode, which we were just currently in and connected to. Then a field work mode. In order to switch, we just connect from the front, we connect to the side, and then we hit X to fold the planter up. And now we're ready to get to work in working mode. We come up here, we're going to address the field. Just in order to keep everything nice and straight, we're gonna go ahead and enable steering assist. We're gonna drop it down, we're gonna turn it on, and walk the course in, and off we go. So like I said, we're gonna keep track of the seed we use, and I'll report back in just a few moments. Quite some interesting information we have here. Remember, we filled this up, 660 liters worth of seed. I've completely planted that field of corn. It is just about one hectare in size, maybe a hair under one hectare, and we're at 609 liters. So we used 51 liters worth of seed. A far cry from the information that was in the infographic from FS22 and shown on the Giants website as being a part of their kind of help information and their academy. So I think they're going to need to be either updating the academy or hopefully not updating the game because we've seen this pretty much across the board with any crop that we have referenced the FS22 academy information. So that's been wheat, barley, oat, canola, soybeans at this point, sorghum and corn in that order. So all of those have had a lower actual seed rate in FS25 from what was listed on that infographic. We are now going to go ahead and spray some herbicide on this field. It shows that it needs weeding. I'm just gonna spray herbicide on here. It's gonna be real quick and real easy. And we have a 95% bonus. And that's what we're gonna go with. And then once I get that done, I'll fast forward to May, and we'll see what our first growth state is going to look like. We've made it to May. We have our first growth state for our corn. Everything looks nice here. And uh, we'll just go ahead and move on into June. And we've already got corn up to our chest, it looks like, which is pretty good. We see it's starting to tassel. So we've got our pollen up there at the top, just waiting for the uh, wind to blow this stuff around and basically then start to pollinate our ears. We can't really see the ears quite yet, but uh, they are going to be forming here very soon. So let's go ahead and move into July. You know, around here they have a saying. It's knee-high by mid-July. That kind of implies that you're going to have a really good corn harvest or you're on track to have a decent corn harvest. But really, that relates to using corn as a follow-on crop to winter wheat or winter barley. It's really sad that we don't have a crop counter that allows us to emulate that, where we could plant our winter wheat and our winter barley, but then by May be able to bring that off the field and then we'd be able to plant our corn and then we would have you know we'd be a little delayed with our corn harvest schedule but still it would work and it does work and that's what I see here where I kind of grew up and where I live now but now our corn is definitely above our knees well it's above our head 
We still have our tassel up there, but we are seeing our corn ears start to mature there. And uh, we've got a couple more growth stages left to go. Now we've made it to August. We have two more months until we were technically at a ready to harvest state for our traditional grain harvester. But we are now actually in a harvest state for our forage harvester. So if we take a look here at our growth, right, we have this second to the last growth state. And it is technically now able to be chopped and used as silage. Okay, you don't have to wait for it to get into a ready to harvest state in order to chop it. Now, you could come in here, you could chop it now, right? It's August, and then you would be able to put barley or wheat in the field come September for next year, right? So if all you really wanted to do was chop your corn and make silage out of it, then you could go ahead and do it now in August. You put canola in the ground and get that going for next year, right? You could also get started well, with, uh, I mean, if you wanted to, you put poplar in there. We've already seen poplar is quite a profitable crop. But yeah, at this point in time, this can be used in order to make silage with our forage harvester. We don't have to wait till it is in its final rated harvest state, but we do have to wait for it to get to this growth state right here, the second from the last. And if you're wondering, why are your colors different than mine? Well, I have colorblind mode turned on. So if I turn that off and take a look here. So there you go. You've got, you've got your colors, right? And there's a lot more gradients there that, um, that I really can't tell the differences between. So I go and turn this on and it just makes things a whole lot easier for me. Now let's go ahead and move forward. And we'll see another growth state come next month. We're now in our final growth state. It is September, one month away from being ready to harvest for our traditional rain harvester. And again, if we came in here with our forage harvester, we could harvest this as well. We don't have to wait until it is ready to harvest in order to do that. But what we do want to do is go ahead and move this thing into October so we can use our traditional grain harvester on our field. And there you have it. It is ready to harvest time. Our corn is drying out. See the ears have kind of opened up. The tassels turned all brown, right? It is all ready to go. So we're gonna jump here into our cloth harvester. We will unfold the header because we don't need to worry about road transport. We'll unfold our harvester. And from this point, we will go ahead and get to town harvesting our corn with a traditional harvester. Now, just like some other crops that we have already talked about, we do not have the ability of getting straw off of our corn harvest. It is going to scatter chaff out the back and actually under the head itself. And as a result, if we take a look here at our soil composition, well, interesting enough, we are not getting a mulch state. I thought for sure we would, but we are not. So we will have to come back and mulch our field if we do want that mulch state. That is kind of surprising. I didn't really think that we would see a mulch state here, but we're not. Now, what I do also want to check is with respect to our plowed state, do we need plowing 
and I have typically left this turned off. So let me turn this thing back on and come back up here to our menus. And this should indicate that yes, we do need to plow after your corn harvest. So unlike other crops where you do not have to plow after you harvest. So for example, we do not have to plow after wheat, barley, oats, canola. We do not have to plow after sorghum, nor do we have to plow after soybeans. We do have to plow after corn. What are you doing? So just remember, if you are doing a corn harvest, or if you are forage harvesting your corn, if you're chopping your corn, you will need to plow after you harvest when you are now preparing your field for the next round of crops. So our harvest is over. We have 17,825 liters worth of corn from our approximately one hectare size field. Now I'm going to go ahead and dump all of this in our cereal factory. But if I sold all of this at the best price possible, basically what was listed as the best price here at our screen, 1409 then we would get $25,115 off of our field now the best price time to sell that is in June it is now October the absolute worst time to sell our corn we can sell our corn at the farmers market Royal Crest Valley train sell point the grain barge terminal one and two and the grain river silo here on Riverbend Springs of course depending on what map you are on well, it might be different as far as where you can sell your grain. You can also, of course, put it in the silo and store for later. But like I said, we're going to use our cereal factory. And I've gone ahead and added some product into the cereal factory. I've added chocolate, honey, and oats. So chocolate, honey, and oats. And corn is going to make cereal. And it looks like... Basically, we're going to get 55% of cereal out of what we put in as far as corn goes. So just over half if we do chocolate. If we do raisins, then we're going to get exactly half. So if we put 40 units of corn in, we're going to get 20 units of corn out. So if we put 20,000 units of corn in, we're going to get the equivalent of 10,000 units of cereal out. As, but also we have to also pay attention to these other ingredients because, you know, for 10,000 units of honey, we're going to get 20,000 or 20, yeah, 20,000 units of cereal, right? So we have the various ratios. Now, cereal looks like it's a very, very profitable crop. So if we look here at our prices screen, right, we see our corn average high 1409 on easy average low 764 on easy. We take a look at our cereal. Oddly enough, there's only one cereal, right? You'd think that there would be more, right? We have chocolate cereal, we have raisin cereal, rice cereal, long grain rice cereal, but it's only cereal in the end. So it really goes into what you put in to make it. So you're gonna have to decide, is it cheaper to make chocolate and make chocolate cereal or cheaper to make raisins to make raisin cereal? Or is it just cheaper to use long grain rice and honey to get cereal or regular rice and honey to get cereal? We've already talked about cereal production with respect to rice in our rice video. I'll put a little tick in the upper right corner and you go check that out. But at any rate, if we look at our price here, average high of 12,636, 12,636 per thousand liters of cereal average high, average low of 10,866 of cereal. So again, very, very profitable, but you do have quite a mix of things that need to go into it. And for chocolate, well, you're going to need 
steady supply of milk. You're going to need a steady supply of sugar for your chocolate. And then also you're going to need a steady supply of honey. So lots of beehives because we know in Farm Sim 25, honey does not come easy. And then you're going to have to have your oats. We've already done a video on oats, so we'll be able to calculate how much oats do you need in order to produce the cereal that you want to produce at any given rate. And we're going to go ahead and fast forward another month and see how much cereal gets produced out of the 17,825 liters of, of corn that I put in. Happy New Year! All right, now, really, it's January, right? We left off in October with our cereal mill running. And I moved into November. We had a couple pallets of cereal out, but that was it. So I was then left with the question, how long is it gonna to take to produce all the cereal that is possible with the amount of corn that we put into our cereal factory? Well, it took until night time of December. It was dark, it was like 8 p.m. December time. Um, and it was just too dark to record anything. So I went ahead and moved forward into January. It's mid morning. And we have two, four, six, seven, eight, nine pallets. So we got nine pallets out of all that corn that we put in. Again, 17,825 liters. We also would have had to put in 17,825 liters worth of oats. And I put in 20,000 liters worth of chocolate. We used just under 5,000 liters of chocolate and just under 5,000 liters worth of honey in order to also produce those pallets. And you can see we have almost a tenth pallet. Not quite, almost a tenth pallet, but we can't get any more going on. So I wanted to go ahead and just take these three and just sell them at the various farmer's kiosks here and see what we got. So 13915 That's better than the average high price. 13902 And historically when I've done this, the large farmer's market has been a lower price. So we'll see. We'll see if that trend continues here. 12,127. So definitely 13,000. Uh, what was it? 13,000. Something 15. 13,916. So the price is going up. So if we take and go $13,916 times 9 pounds, that's $125,000 if we made this into corn or took the corn and made it into cereal. But again, we would have to have a very steady supply of oats. We need another 17,825 of oats. We need just shy 5,000 liters of chocolate. That would require sugar, sugar beets, sugar cane, and just under 5,000 liters worth of honey, which would require a substantial amount of beets. Now, of course, you could go and possibly buy those products. I wouldn't suggest it, but I guess you could buy those products down here at the warehouse. Let's just see. Uh, $4,000 to buy that. And then we also need to buy chocolate. $8,000 to buy that. And remember, that's per thousand. So we had times that by five, right? That really starts eating into that $125,244 worth of profit. So guys, that is it. That's pretty much a rundown of what you're going to be able to do with respect to corn. No, we didn't actually demonstrate forage harvesting corn, but I've already demonstrated that and talked about that in pretty good detail in our silage video. So I will reference you to that. There will be a link down in the description and a link, a little tick mark up in the upper right corner. After you harvest your corn, you will have to come through here and plow. It will have a need plow state after every corn harvest. 
So be sure you take care of that. And overall, hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you know anybody that needs help with corn or is maybe curious on if corn is worth it, then go ahead and send them a link to this video. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed it. Go ahead and click a like button too if you did like it. If you're not subscribed, please go ahead and click subscribe too. We are still going to have a lot more tips and tricks videos coming out in the near future. If you're watching this on release day or very soon after release day, I've got videos planned all the way up basically to near Christmas day. And we might even find other reasons to have videos throughout the holiday time frame added to our tips and tricks playlist. But we're going to have map tours throughout the entire run of Farm Sim 25. We're also going to be doing live streams on Farm Sim. So do definitely subscribe and I look forward to meeting you all in chat. Till next time, happy farming.